Praise the Lord. Everybody, we are so thankful uh, to meet with you today um, on this wonderful, wonderful occasion. And I've got some notes to talk about it in just the beginning. I want to initially say Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Uh, I have a funny note up here in my sermon that uh, we are definitely a CME kind of a people. You go to, you got to do it at Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. No matter if you're Pentecostal or not, we all CME. And, and so this is one of those big celebrations. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, we won't be outside. The, the stores won't be packed at Mother's Day. Because uh, ain't nobody going to be there. You can't go sit down. So then this year, it's going to feel just like Men's Day or Father's Day. And, ain't nobody going out to eat. <laughs> ain't nobody going out to eat. <laughs> Ain't nobody taking y'all out to eat. But we love you. Happy birthday. That's fine. All day long. Listen, I honor Jesus Christ. That's really true. I honor Jesus Christ who said in the church and he's head of our lives. And we appreciate him. Listen, let me say this. Let me honor uh, a mother, uh, but a wonderful lady, Pastor Alberta Kildra. We thank God for her. We thank God for Pastor Reginald Coleman. He's in the back hanging out with us. And to what I call COVID team. Amen. Janice is hanging out with us today. Jennifer is hanging out. Did she do an excellent job last week? Daphne. Daphne is hanging out with us. Camille is getting ready to come join us. Amen. We thank God for this. We thank God for the for the band that's hanging out with us today. And good old Pete. Uh, and good old Chairman Debo. He's hanging out with us today. And so we appreciate you. We thank God for all of you. Please, let me say this just on the front of this. I, I am one of those persons that has, um, that is not fortunate enough to have his mother with him in the here and the now. Uh, my mother transitioned in 2012. Uh, but if you have a mother, please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure you celebrate them uh, without them. You don't exist. I said this, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. I might as well get this out of my system. So, you know, men have the seed, but the mothers are the ones who produce. They're the ones who carry. They're the ones who cover. They're the ones who feed. They're, they care for you. They, they protect you. Uh, and so, if your mother is alive, please celebrate them today as best you can. If you don't like to have one, uh, if you don't have a mother in the here and the now, um, don't be too, too sad because my mother lives inside of me. Amen. She puts some stuff inside of me. And uh, when I look in the mirror, the old I get, I find myself acting like my mother. And uh, I know y'all may not have this at y'all place, but I got a sister. That act just like my mama and my grandma. So whenever I miss my mama and grandma, I just call my sister. And I know she in there somewhere. <laughs> and so we appreciate you. Please take the opportunity to love up on me. Now, um, lastly, we welcome you. Thank you for hanging out with us. And man, you don't have to do it. But thank you so much for hanging out with us here. As you can see, as we are flowing in ministry and we are allowing God to do his thing in us. Got a few things that we're going to talk about today. All right, so we are ready to start our praise and worship now. Just slightly, this is going to, as they start playing, uh, just slightly, we're going to, after we finish with our song, Pastor uh, Alberta uh, is going to come and just encourage the words. As wonderful as I think I am, uh, I ain't no mom. Hallelujah. I ain't had not named my child. Not me, I want. <laughs> and so I appreciate every mother. Let me go ahead. Since I got the mic, let me give a shout out to Lady Hope. 
you ain't in the building, but you, you probably on online. Way down, we appreciate you, love you, and all that you do. So, what we found out is we're going to take it back a little bit. We're going to take it back just a smidge and go a little country that we're from North Carolina. I think we did something to get the line. Yeah. 
a hand and the band. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for what you have done. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to take a few minutes right now. And uh, Pastor Alberta is going to come. And just give you um, a little word of encouragement. And then I'm going to come back. Don't leave because I'm going to come back with part two of the episode of the sons and the daughters. Let's receive her as she comes. Pastor Alberta Hamilton Kimbrell here at Goodwill Baptist Church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you. Woo! This song has messed me up. We bless God today for our here being in this place. And we thank God for all he has done and is doing in through our lives. I do want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there as we stream over this day. But we thank God that you are with us today. We thank God that he made a way. You know, that was the old cry, old mother's cry all the time. I know my mother, Elizabeth Brown of Hamilton, was a prayer, and she would always say, God gonna make a way. God gonna make a way. The old saints and the old mothers always said, God gonna make a way. Bishop Max said to come to encourage the ladies today. I look at different scriptures in the Bible, and I see how God loves his women, yes, how he loves his little girls, yes, how Jesus treated us when he was down on this earth, when the people around us, glory to God, thought we was second-class citizens. I come to you from 2 Corinthians today, 4 and 7, and this is the easy reading version if you have it, that says we have this treasure from God, but we are only like clay jars that hold the treasure. This is to show that the amazing power we have from God is not from us. We recognize women of God today. We recognize mothers that the power, or you should, that is in us. God has placed us. He made us in such a way. He made us special to carry life. Glory to God. As Bishop alluded to before, men might have the seed, but we carry the eggs. And if that seed didn't have no to fertile, then it still wouldn't be any humans here. God blessed us with that gift, glory to God, of this treasure that is inside of us. But the verse is not talking about just the mothers having babies, but the treasure of the Holy Spirit that God has placed on us throughout time and throughout the years. In Genesis 2, it says that the Lord said and looked at Adam and said everything was good, but they said man should not be alone, that he should have a help meet. And looking up that word, help meet, glory be to God. Help meet means someone that shares in with you, someone that's a dual custodian, someone that, that has the authority and the guardian over. So he made man and woman in his image, and man and woman had the same authority at over that time. Help meet. And when Adam took the time to name his wife Eve, Eve means life-giving, yeah. mother of all who have life. We have the life that we carry with inside us. Just think a human being that is being created and born. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We praise his name. In fact, God created both men and women in his own image and made them equal, as I said, custodians. And custodians talking about the guardians, the defenders, the upholders, the overseers, the protectors, and the keepers. As we look upon, ladies and gentlemen, our mothers, I wear a white flower to represent that my mother has gone on to glory. And I bless God for her. And I know many of us do. But as Bishop, if you have your mothers here, you should at least call them. You should at least drop the car. You should at least honor them with a text. And something today to honor your mothers because our Lord knows I miss my mama. But I tell you what, as I look in the mirror, as I see myself preach, as I see.
see myself pray. I hear Elizabeth Brown Hamilton, glory be to God, reflecting back at me. And I thank God for that. You know how good God loves women? I tell you what, God loves women because he put them in a special place. Glory to God, to be help meet with men, to hold them up, not to tear them down. Glory to God. Amen. To work with them, glory, not to work against them. Glory to God. To walk with them side by side in all the life journey. So women, I'm telling you out there, mothers, I'm telling you out there, during this time of pandemic is the time that we should show up and show out the most. Glory to God. To give the love, glory to our families, to do what we need to do, to do the encouragement. God loved us so much that the Bible gives us reference that he had the goal to take somebody like Rehab, glory to God, Rehab the prostitute, and because she believed in God and gave her life to him, she helped bring Israel victory over Jericho. He had the nerve to take a woman like Ruth, glory to God, who was taught by her mother-in-law and says, wherever your place go, I say I'm going to live. Wherever your people live, they're going to be my people. Whatever your God is, it's going to be my God. Glory be to God. Therefore, changing the nation, coming in here, marrying Boaz, begotten Obed, who married Ruth, who got begotten the father of the Jesse, which is the father of David the king. So you see how God honors women that through us the seeds that we carry go out and establish nations, go out and establish our, our rules and regulations, go out and be doctors and lawyers and do a change in that. It took a woman at the well to go out to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And all the men came, glory to God, and all the town was converted. It took a young girl, teenagers, young women, a name Mary, who said yes unto the Lord. And in that he put the spirit of the Holy Ghost and she brought about the Savior. It took a woman to do this. Yes, I said, we are joint custodians. We are joint guardians. We are joint defenders. We are joint upholders. We are joint overseers. We are joint protectors. So to all the mothers out there, to all the mamas out oh, there, yeah. to all the mommies out there, to all the grandmothers out there, to all the grandmas out there, to all the big mamas out there, yeah. to all the GGs out there, to all the me me mamas out there, to all the aunties out there, to all the teachers that help bring the children up, to all the nurses in the hospitals that bore the children in the neck units and cover them and carry them to out there, to all the nurses in the nursing home and has to hold them at the end of the day to be a mother over the seniors that mother is not good already gone home. Glory be to God. To all the young mothers out there, to all the senior mothers out there, that we are made to hold the hands of the young ones and teach them the way of the Lord. I speak the words, glory to God, of Apostle John in his Ephesians and his uh, verse second John that an easy reader that says to the elect woman of God mother and motherhood greetings to the lady chosen by God and her children I truly love you and I am not the only one all those who know the truth that's the truth of love yeah. know you the same way we love you because of truth the truth that lives in us, that truth will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be from the God and Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ, as we live in this truth. So today, we at Goodwill salute you today. Salute you on your special day, this May 10th, 2020. From the Cookville Baptist Church, from our senior pastor, Bishop Stephen L. Williams, from Pastor Reginald B. Coleman, and myself, Pastor Cooper, to all of the congregation, Woo! and to all that are seeing this live stream, we salute you. We salute you today, and we thank you. Go up with your head hung high. It is an honor to be a woman. It is an honor to be a woman. You do not have to have had born a baby to be a mother. God spoke to me 
in this scripture that told me a woman who holds a child's hand and carries them out is a mother, motherhood. A woman, a grandmama or auntie that not have children and they raise children and speak the word of life and talk is a mother. And we bless God for the women today. It is a partner of status to be a woman. And I'm so glad today. I'm so glad today. If I had a chance to get the beginning of the beginning and God asked me what I wanted to be, I would say, Lord, make me a woman. So today I'm honored you. I give you praise. I thank you for all you've done, for all you are doing. I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for the night you worked at midnight. I thank you for scrubbing the floor. I thank you everything that you've done for us.
we're not, we're, gonna, we're right here to get it done. Amen? Amen. Anybody ready for the word? Amen. All right. I hope I was clear. Was I clear? You was clear, dog. All right, let's be clear. Hey, man, so we're going to do that. I got a song coming out. We're going to do it on the SL Williams, SL Williams Ministries um, uh, platform. And then we're going to go from there. Hey, Amen. So there is no confusion. Hey, Amen. <laughs> All right. Father, help me. In Jesus' name. With this word, we'll forever give you praise. Amen and amen. When I tell you, Pastor Alberta Kilda done messed me up today. Oh, no. Let me get myself together because she, uh, I feel like preaching about a woman. Amen. Uh, let me continue today with episode two of sons and daughters. Now, I have to give you some bad news. There is absolutely no way I'm going to be able to finish and tie it in. So you're going to have to come back one more week to find out why Peter used it. So please, tune in next week so that I can get this final episode to you to the saga of the sons and the daughters. All right. So we started this off in Acts chapter number 2, verse number 14 uh, through 21 is what I want to read in your hearing. Then Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Yeah. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit uh, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men that shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I'm going to stop there. Uh, verse 19 through 21 is really good. Uh, when it talks about this is the day of the Lord. But I must hurry and get to this. Um, I wanted to, even in the initial state of this, and I think I've uh, recapped a little bit so that we can get to the sons and daughters. There is uh, such sadness right now going on. Uh, Andre Harrell who was a part of the hip hop uh, crowd. Uh, those of you who were part of hip hop, uh, he died, he was responsible for P. Diddy and all that music that y'all still sing that you ain't quite got delivered from yet. Amen. So he passed away, so some of them saints might be sad and I just wanted to give my condolences. Uh, and then for the older saints, Lord, Little Richard, and went on. Lord, too fruity. Too fruity and went on. Put a boom, boom, boom. He done got up out of here. Lord Jesus. We're going to miss the Richard. Amen. And then for this present generation, which is more of a serious, the Armand Aubrey, uh, who was murdered in South Carolina. No, Georgia. Thank you. He was murdered in Georgia. And uh, people were running yesterday because it was his 26th birthday. Uh, why do I bring all of these people up in the, in the front of the sons and the daughters? Those three persons, and there are other people during this COVID-19, uh, so many more people. Uh, I think we're moving up closer to 80,000 or 90,000. I'm not sure what it is now uh, in depth from COVID. But one thing all of these people had in common, every last one of them yes, sir. had a mother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't know if their fathers were present, but every last one of them had to have a mother. Yes, sir. And so today, you know, I don't know if Andre's mother is still alive. I think her mom's is. They are grieving yes, over sir. their sons. 
they had mothers. And so we need to make sure that we are uh, sensitive during this time. Uh, and I, I want to uh, go back to this text. And so I, in order for me to properly give you some clarity on Joel, we have to visit Joel. Visit him. Because out of all the scripture in the Old Testament that Peter could have used, he uses Joel. And so if you were like me, if you encounter a preacher, half a preacher, piece of a preacher, if you had anything in you, you wanted to know too, why did he choose Joel? And some of my preachers start studying no money. And I can't wait to see if I saw something that they didn't see. I hope I did in yeah. Jesus' name. Which he knows he says. And so he says, what is, what is it about Joel? So let me explain. Let me give you a little bit about, about Joel. So as my sister said, I love the his, history. So Joel, Nahum, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah are Old Testament chapters, are Old Testament books that only have three chapters there. Yeah. All right? Uh, Haggai in the Old Testament only has two chapters. And Obadiah only has one chapter. Now there are several others that have four chapters, and then there are several that have a whole bunch of chapters. And so I ask God, why in the, the genesis and the biggest day of the year, uh, the biggest moment in Christendom, would you use Joel? And this is what the Lord said to me. He said, uh, sometimes great words, uh, great messages come from minor people. I'm already starting off wrong. I'm already starting off wrong. A great word yes, can sometimes come from somebody you designate as minor. Yeah. Joel is considered a part of the minor prophet. And so he doesn't fit, it doesn't come across as a major moment with, with what he's saying with only three chapters. But it is so profound with what God is saying in his movement that he had to go and pick and pluck a minor prophet to give a major word. See, sometimes, sometimes folk will make you feel like you minor. Folk will make you act, want, want you to act like you, you to the side because you don't look like them. You don't, you don't, you don't drive like them. You don't, you're not, you're not as articulated. You don't have the education. But you better be careful how you handle people who you consider minor. They could have your major word. So the theologians, the theologians are saying they are writing and they are having a problem with trying to find out how this book actually begins. And so the book of Joel starts off with chaos. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It starts off with chaos because it starts off with the locusts yeah. uh, tearing up the land. Yes. When you go to Joel chapter number one and chapter number four, uh, the locusts have destroyed the land unlike anything anybody has seen. <laughs> And so when I look at, look at Joel chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, it is so profound that Joel tells the older saints, make sure you tell it to your children because it ain't never been like this before. It, uh, wait a minute, uh, y'all ain't with me. Now, what you're going to find me doing today is you're going to find me trying to bridge the gap as to why Peter is using it in the book of Acts. And what does that have to do with me now? Well, can I tell you? The locusts that they ate up the land, when he told them in verse number two and three, make sure you tell it to your children and grandchildren, is the same anomaly, if you will, that happened in the book of Acts. Yeah. Because you need to tell them that Jesus has died on the cross. Yes, Ain't but one Jesus that can cause this much uh, uh, stuff to go on in the book of Acts. And how does that correlate to us? Baby, COVID-19 is like unlike anything we ever seen in our lives. And so Joel and the book of Acts and where we are presently creates a bridge. And here we 
God, we got to go all the way back to Joel, who some theologians are saying is around 580 something BC, which is before Christ. But when we get to it, and I really don't have time to start, I really don't have time. Uh, I went to search why and uh, why did God start the text off with destruction? Why did God even send the locusts? Uh, I went really to go and I tried to dig a little deeper because I knew y'all were going to be smarty pants and read on the surface. I was trying to read up under the surface. Oh, yeah, yeah. Couldn't find nothing other than God's people had drifted away. Exactly. Y'all ain't with me. Because see, when you drift away, God has to create something to pull you back. Mm. And the people had drifted away in such a way that God used locusts. Now the big question in Joel, Dr. Coleman, who I know is astute in the word of God, I had to find out why would God use locusts? Uh -huh. And what is it about locusts? And so I really show up, show up, don't have time to tell you about the locusts. That's a whole sermon all by itself. But can I tell you a little bit that locusts move as a whole group. They move according to the wind. Now, I saw this and I thought this was really funny. Y'all going, now they do have wings. They have wings, but you ain't gonna believe this, Pastor Alberta. The wings are not strong enough to carry them. How do they get from one place to the other? Their hind legs make them jump up and get in the wind. Oh. The hind legs of the locusts make them leap in the wind. And they can sense when God is sending the wind. And so they leap. And when they get up, they lose, use their little arms. And they travel as far as the wind can carry. Lord, ah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so they spring into action. Now, here is the thing. They can travel for miles. <laughs> And scripture declares in verse number, uh, uh, verse number um, in Joel, verse number six, the Bible declares that they got teeth like lions. Yeah. Oh my God. Which means they destroy yeah. everything yeah. in their place. The trees, the crops, the branches. And I looked this up because I wanted to know, did we have some locusts? And then usually it happens in Africa, in Asia, and the Middle East. They eat up the locust then, uh, Camille, eats up its weight in food every day. So it can eat its weight in food. In my case, that's a whole lot of food yes, because of my weight. And they can eat that weight, digest it, and then go back and eat some more the very next day. And uh, so they are tearing stuff up. They can spread over 460 square miles. It can be 40 million of them to 80 million of them per half mile. In 1875, here I go with all this history stuff that y'all don't want to talk about. In the Midwest, they came into the United States in 1875 and they created a thing called, that, was, that was 18 miles long. And then the, what I read was they are distinct and extinct right now in America. And I said, Lord, thank you, oh Jesus. Because out of all the things, COVID is a mess. But honey, if we had some locusts, that would be a horrible pit. So you ought to thank God that locusts ain't running up in this piece right now. Ain't they king of everything? But God used, y'all gonna love this, oh my God. So I was asking him, Coleman, why locusts? Why locusts? Why locusts? He said, I needed to create locusts to create a crowd. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, y'all ain't with me today. Y'all ain't with me today. I'm gonna just believe me like, what the world? I needed to create locusts so I could create a crowd. That's the reason why COVID-19 is in the atmosphere. COVID-19 is not here for the saints to get scared. It's here for the saints to cry. It's here for the saints to cry. The reason why 
Jesus was taken away from the people is because when you take Jesus away, it'll make you cry. Yeah. It'll make you go into the upper room and sit down and try to figure out. And we say it this way in the country church. You're going to have a little talk with Jesus and you're going to tell him all about your trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ain't got to get to here, here, you by and by. No, baby, let me talk to you about my trouble. If COVID hadn't done nothing else, it has made us cry. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you talking. I hear what you're saying. Because the first thing we said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then when I hear from heaven, I forgive their sin and I'll heal their life. So God took the locust. God took locusts. That's why God put stuff in your life to create a crowd. That's why God let stuff happen going on in your world just so he could hear you cry out. Because sometimes you can be so on your journey that you forget to cry out to God in a real way. You know, because right now church has become so commonplace that people would just enter into his gates but wouldn't even have no thanksgiving. They was looking for their seat. I bet you next time you go to church, you're going to be saying, thank you, Lord, for having a church. Thank you, God, for building. Thank you for legs to walk. Thank you, Lord. I can't wait to see the saints. Lord, gee, I can't wait to be in the number. Remember when you didn't want to go to church? Remember when you was late for every one of the services? Remember when we used to have too much church? I bet you ain't saying that now. I bet you crying. Lord, I can't wait to get back. I can't wait to get back to what I was complaining about before yeah. I left. No, y'all ain't with me. Yeah. You was complaining about being in church, and now you crying to get here. Yeah. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Let me hurry up. Let me hurry up. I gotta go. I gotta go. Lord Jesus, I gotta go my time. And so, here's the first thing that I want to share with you about Joel. Uh, Gene, Joel, when he first started, the first thing he says, Coleman, in chapter, in, verse, in chapter number 1, verse number 13, he said, Guard yourselves and lament. And he is starting to talk to the preachers. Here's uh -huh. point number two. God was trying to use COVID to, to get the preachers to get in place. Because church folk and women, I put this in my notes. I put this, uh, and that would not be me. I put this in my notes. That some folk were only interested in how much, how good suit they can wear. Some people are interested in what kind of car they could drive. And they were trying to smooch you over with a, 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 a monogram French cups and trying to get you to drive. Fly in first class. Well, I can uh, uh, I can already say that show wasn't me because I'm driving the same Honda I came in with is the same Honda I got right now. <laughs> I ain't got no Mercedes and the Benzes. I ain't even got my truck yet. Why? Because it's no use in trying to celebrate yourself yeah. when you forget God's people. <laughs> Y'all gonna pick me? I told you uh, he started with. And if you go back to Malachi, this is why it's taking me so long. Yeah. I got too much information. When you go to Malachi, he ain't talking to the saints about the time. He talking to the preacher about the time. That's because we made it about something that it ain't got nothing to be about. We have a theme at our church where the presence, his people, and his presence is the priority. It is not the preacher. And what good is a preacher without the presence? And what good is a people? And what good is a preacher without a people? If you can't build up the people, what good is the preacher? When you know you got it, but ain't nobody else got it. Oh, I'm so free today to know that I've been exercising, that his presence is more important. His people are more important than the preacher. Because in 13, he says what I need y'all is get off your high horse and go to the altar and cry. Yes, Lord. You trying to be in ownership of people. You don't own nobody. We all are the 
heritage of God. This ain't in my notes. We all are the heritage of God. We all belong to him. Now, what did he tell them to do? He told them, sanctify fast. Yes, sir. He said, call the people together and sanctify fast. I told y'all on Wednesday that power is not in the salvation. Power is in the sanctification. If you ain't got no sanctification, you ain't got no power. You just talking like you saved, but you ain't got no power. You talking saved and you saying I'm saved, but no power to tell the devil to get out your mind. No power to tell the devil to get out your house. No power to tell the devil to get out your body. You got to have power in this relationship. This relationship requires power because you are wrapped in sin and shaped in iniquity. So your, your flesh wants to rule and you can't rule talking about I'm saved. You have to tell your flesh, shut up in the name of Jesus. Sit down in the name of Jesus. Close your mouth in the name of Jesus. I know you don't want me to go to church, but I'm going to drag you with your hands to say, we all going to church. Your spirit has to be bigger than your flesh. Stop sitting around here talking about you going to die. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. I will live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm sorry, I don't got somewhere else. This ain't even got nothing to do with my joy. I'm trying to get there, saints. But I'm trying to tell you, God is not interested in you having a pity party right now. He sent COVID so you could cry to him. He sent the locusts so the people would cry to him. He's trying to drive us back to a hallelujah. He's trying to drive us back to Lord, I love you. He's driving us back to Lord, I give thanks and praise to I will lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. And I will bless the Lord. Y'all ready for this? And the sanctuary ain't even the church. The sanctuary is wherever you are. Lord, y'all ain't with this. Your home is the sanctuary. Your car is the sanctuary. As T.D. Jake said, the church building is closed. So he says in verse number 15, I gotta go, he says in verse number 15, Gene, I'm so happy that you're here. He said, and it is most really profound, in, in verse number 15 of chapter 1, he said, the day of the Lord is at hand, which means, and meat is cut off, and gladness is gone out of the house. In verse number 15, it says, alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty shall come. 16 said, it is not the meat cut off, from before thy eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of God. Don't that sound like COVID-19? Well, the meat been trying to cut. Ain't they cutting off the meat? And ain't no joy because they, you can't get to the house of God because ain't no joy. Man, you home right now. We got a little joy. <laughs> we got church joy. <laughs> uh, but sometimes you got to find joy right where you are. But it ain't in the house of God. <laughs> Because ain't nobody in the house of God. Y'all ain't with me. And so it says uh, in verse number 17, he said, uh, in verse number 17, he said, the seed is rotten um, uh, under the clots, and the gardens are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. Mm -hmm. And so he said something so powerful, uh, uh, Pastor Alberta, that I can't even, I ain't got time to, 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 to get to it he, because it's so profound. He tells them, he says to the priest, what I need you to do is go and weep in between the porch and the altar. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, y'all ain't with me. You got to tell the preacher sometimes, you got to, you got to weep in between the porch yeah. and the altar. Yeah. The porch is where you've been seen. Yeah. The altar is where you make the sacrifice. Somewhere in the middle where you ain't seen. And you ain't made no sacrifice. You need to cry loud and spare not. He starts out because judgment must come to the house of God. And the ones who are in the house of God, who govern where God is, has to come from the priest. And so, uh, preachers, I love us. I love us all. But baby, if you don't get off, if we don't get off our high horse and go find us a prayer time, COVID gonna drive us crazy. 
praise it. But I bet you we pray now. I bet you we're not interested in what the offering going to be. I bet you we're not interested in how much we're going to raise. Honey, we're trying to find God so we don't die in COVID ourselves. And if you love his people, you're trying to pray for direction. Should we open up or should we close? Shall I go or shall I stay? What you want me to do? What do you want me to tell your people? Because it's one thing to have the anointing so they can bring you some water. It's another thing to be able to take people to the water in a dry time. Yes, sir. Oh, God, don't no, with me. You're going to have to lead people to some water. Yeah. No, you can't get no water. You're going to have to tell the saints where the water is. Come on, <laughs> And what am I saying? Where is the water? Y'all ain't ready for me. You want to know where the water is? The water is in the Word of God. Before you look anywhere else, drink the water of the books of the Bible. I have to keep on going, glory, I'm sorry. And so somebody must cry for the people. Yeah. A real pastor's cry for the people. Then he says in verse 18, and I got to hurry, I got to hurry. Then he says in verse 18, listen what he says. Uh, oh, how do the beast groan? Lord, the beast is groan. The herd of cattle are perplexed. Lord, the, the, right now, the cattle messed up. Hallelujah. Everybody messed up because they have no pasture. The locusts took the breeding ground from what should help us be healthy. My God. My God. What helps us be healthy, the locusts ate up. Uh -huh. Oh, you know they with me. That's the you got it. COVID done messed around and took away our playground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. I'm talking about all the way. Yeah. Wait a minute. When Jesus died, it took away their playground. Because yes, wasn't nobody getting no two fish and five loaves. Yes, wasn't nobody walking on no water. In fact, them jokers had been scared until they saw him again. <laughs> and so God uses the moment to, to take away your playground. How many of you ain't playing church now? I feel I feel sure Caesar. She ain't playing now. The Holy Ghost has jumped on. I bet you ain't playing now. None of us are. We're trying to make sure our relationship is tidy with God. Because I'm going to be tight with him just in case he called my name. Y'all ain't with me. COVID ain't got no color. COVID ain't got no wealth. COVID ain't got nothing on it. COVID will take out anybody. Black, white, rich, poor, fat, skinny, and tall, short, he don't, that, whatever that thing is, it don't matter. So we might want to get a little, uh, you might want to have a little talk with Jesus uh, so you can get your relationship. I must move on. And so, then in verse number 19, uh, 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 Gibson, here you go, don't preach my stuff. Uh, listen to what he says in verse number 19. Uh, 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 when, when he gets to verse number 19, he says something so powerful. Uh, let me move on to chapter 2. When, when we get to chapter 2, and let me jump on to verse number 19 in chapter number 2. Verse number 19, uh, he says, Yea, the Lord will answer. Chapter number 2, verse number 19. Yea, the Lord will answer and say to his people, after he has heard his cry, I will send you corn, wine, and oil. Now, before I get there, but before I get there, the locust and the canker worm and the palm worm gonna have to eat up your stuff. That's right. New stuff. Come on with that. It's done took your stuff. Yeah. COVID done mess around and took our appreciation yeah. for gathering. Thomas said, the good God of mine, I got to get back to church. Yeah. Amen. Even the unsaved people tell me I got to go to church. Yeah. And so what it did was, everybody say, after the cry, after the cry. God starts performing. Wow. So once they cried, come, and then they said this, they said, they said this, they said this in chapter number two, when you get down there and y'all start reading.
reading. I can't get into all of it. And then he, he started reading. He said, let the, let the ministers weep in between the porch. And then he said, what triggered God has to have burden. And chapter number two was when they said, Lord, if you don't come see about it, they don't ask the question, where is their God? Yeah. The moment people start asking, well, where do people's God at? Yeah. And God said, when he starts hearing that, yeah. he springs into action. Yes, sir, I love it. I love it. I'm trying to get out of Joel. I'm just telling you why he pulled Joel. And so when he goes to Joel in chapter number two and verse number 19, uh, uh, verse number 19. Listen to what he says in verse number 19. He said, The young, the Lord will answer. Can I say it again? Wait a minute. Can I say it one more time? <laughs> Can I say it one more time to the end of your spirit? <laughs> I'm talking about in Joel. And this is why he had to use Joel in the book of Acts. Because the Lord will answer. After he hears your cry, the Lord will answer. After you reposition yourself, the Lord will answer. After the preachers get between the porch and the altar, yes. the Lord will answer. After you get off your high horse, the Lord will answer. Yes. After you ask for forgiveness, the Lord will answer. Yes. After you cry, Lord, if I have a real church in here, I tell us all, yes, you about God and cry. But yes. so we need God to, we need God to say to us, oh God, we need you. Anybody been crying and God said that the first thing he's going to restore Mm, God. I'm talking about with a barren land. The first thing God says he's going to restore in Joel, after we did all those things, he's going to restore the corn. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Cool. He's going to restore the wine for you wine bitters. Then he's going to restore the oil. I ask God, why would you start with corn? Why? And oil. Why didn't you go back and pull the cattle? Yeah. He said, because it's going to take, boy, I feel like that. Because it's going to take some time to restore everything. Yeah. Boy, y'all ain't with me. Because if I'm in the class that the canker worm and the pumpkin worm, he got to replace it for the years that they ate your stuff. Y'all ain't with me. I'm getting ready. I'm, I gotta sit down. I gotta, Lord, I gotta sit down. Because he said the years. And I said, Lord, you mean to tell me we got to wait for years in COVID? He said, no, 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 no. I'm going to restore from COVID. But you remember all them other years you didn't get what I promised you. Woo! You remember all them other years that it didn't come to pass that you've been waiting on. Huh? This is a part of the process. Lord, y'all ain't with me. <laughs> I needed COVID to get you back from complaining. Because you've been holding on and waiting for something. But this ain't your year to just wait on. The caker worm been taking your stuff. But the poker worm been nibbling at your victory. Been nibbling at your charm. And God said, when I show up after this, I'm bringing you corn. And I got to bring you some wine. And I got to bring you some oil. I said, well, what does that mean? He said, first of all, I'm going to do is give you some provision. Yeah. Because that's what the corn will do. I said, well, Lord, what about the wine? He said, it, with the wine, I'm going to give you some pleasantry with your provision. Because wine will make you merry. I said, well, what about the oil? He said, the oil is the prosperity. So not only when I start turning this thing around, I'm going to give you provision, a pleasant, pleasantry, and I'm going to give you some oil. You're going to get provision, pleasantry, and prosperity. And you're going to say, now what does Joel got to do with Jesus and the book of Acts? Because when Jesus gets into your life, you'll get provision, pleasantry, and you're going to get some prosperity with it all. Lord, have mercy. And so the second thing he said, he, or the third thing he said he was going to do, Jennifer, is in verse number 21. And this is what I started dancing on. He said, I'm going to take and remove the army. 
I said, what do you mean the army? He said, the whole thing that's been fighting against you. The army of the enemy that has uh, established warfare against against the folk who, who ain't even reached their destiny. Come with me. Can we talk? People mad at you and you haven't even become what God told you to become. Every time you turn around, it's an army of somebody else that don't like you for some reason. Somebody always got something to say. They come out there in the army of the Lord. You ain't in no army of the Lord. You're the army of the devil. But I got good news for you that God said the second thing I'm going to do after I give them corn and after I give them wine and after I give them oil, I'm going to remove the army from them. This is all enjoy. It is. It's in the book. Greek bishop. Now, this is what he said. The glory. This just bothered me. Jesus, Lord, help me. Because what he says in 21 messed me up, Coke. But he said, 21, uh, pass that burner uh, for the deep sense. He said, fear not. But then he says, fear not, O land. Uh -huh. Come on. I said, why are you talking to the land when you should be talking to the people? He said, because the covenant I got, who I messed up was the land. The people were a byproduct of the land that I know. So if I can fix the land, I can fix the people. Kid, I'm getting ready to close, man. I know it's taking me too long today. It's just taking me a little longer to get to my baseline. And so uh, that, that's why he said, when you cry, he'll heal the what? Land. The land. It wasn't the people, it's the land. Yeah. Wait a minute. When you see the rainbow in the sky, yeah. that ain't a covenant for the people. That's a covenant he won't mess up the land. Go back and read it. You see the rainbow. That's the company he won't. He, he won't send water. No, he ain't talking to us. It's a reminder to himself. Don't destroy what he produced so that it can help us. Because when he put it in the land, he said whatever is put in the land will be uh, 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 will be multiplied of itself. So if you plant an apple tree, an apple got to come out. If you plant an orange, an orange got to come out. And it is for the people to enjoy. So what God has got to do is deal with the land. This virus has come from somewhere. Yeah. So he said, Ken, I'm almost there. Bottom line, I'm almost there. So he told me to read verse 23 through 27, and I got to go. I ain't got but one more turn of the picture. And so in 23, he said, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath, he hath given you the former right, mildly, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain. And it says in the first month. So in Joel, what he's saying is, I'm going to give you back, uh, I'm going to give you back the stuff, but I need you to get prepared for the rain to come, and I'm going to rain the latter and the former. Stay with me. And then he says, I will restore to you the years yes, that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the pongo worm, my great army which I set among you, and ye shall uh, which I set among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God, for he has drunk wonders for you, and my people shall never be ashamed. I said, okay, that's all good. I said, God, uh, God will do all of that. Listen to what he says in verse number 28. Listen, listen very carefully what he says in verse 28. Coleman, this messed me up. He said, I'm going to do all that stuff. I'm going to give him the answer. I'm going to give him the coal. I'm going to give him the wine. I'm going to give him the oil. I'm going to remove the, the northern army. I'm going to make the land and turn it around. This is all in your hand. The people are going to be glad. The pasture is going to come. I'm going to give you the former rain. And I'm going to give you the latter rain. I'm going to restore the years. Your floor shall be full of wheat and that and overcome with wine and oil. Uh, go back and read it. You shall eat and be planted and be satisfied. And then he says in verse number 28, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit. Yeah. Y'all missed it. Think about catching with Pastor Burke. What God is saying is, I'm going to fix the situation. Yes, sir. Then I'm going to pour my spirit out. Man. Man, I'm going to pour. Ain't nothing worse 
than to have his spirit, but still be jacked up at the crib. So God says, when I turn it, I got to turn the stuff. Then I'm going to pour out my spirit. Yeah. Y'all with me. I'm going to fix your situation. Yes, sir. Then I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. And I said, well, what in the world? Y'all, he, he going to be good part coming. And I got to go. I got to go. Because I, I, I thought the pouring, I thought the pouring would come before he changed. But he said, I'm going to change it before the pouring. I said, God, I thought you said you was going to pour out your spirit on all flesh. He said, I did. But I got to change it first. And then I'm going to pour. I said, so what does that do with Jesus? He said, Jesus was restoration. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, he was. He said, Jesus was the former rain and the latter rain. He said, Jesus was the wheat. He said, Jesus was the wine. And he was the oil. And then when he shot to me and shot in my nerve, he said, Jesus was the reverser. So what God is saying is, I'm going to reverse the circumstance. Then I'm going to pour the power on you. So when they get to Acts, and I still can't get there, I got to close off of this. I don't know how long COVID is going to mess us up. But, but he says that I got to change the circumstance. And then I'm going to pour out my spirit. He said, I sent Jesus first. He died. He rose. But he, had, he came up with all power to change and then you gonna have to cry. After you cry and change your posture, I'm gonna then take that stuff and reverse it back. Everything the devil took from you is coming back. Y'all ain't with me. I know that's right. I'm talking about to the saints right now. Everything the devil took from you, it's gotta come back. I'm in the world. It's all in your way. I'm just trying to figure out why would he use your way and not use anybody else. Yeah. Because God is saying, before I can pour on you, yeah. I'm going to have to restore you. I know they're going to make no sense yeah. to nobody. I'm sorry you ain't getting it, but God said I got to restore you first. Yeah. I got to give you back what the kingdom water told, stole from you. And I said, Lord, you mean tell me we got to wait for COVID? Before we get our stuff back, he said, if you look at it like it's like it's going right now, I'm blessing you in the middle of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm restoring some stuff to you where they where they thought where they talking about taking away, honey. I'm stepping in. Lord. Yeah. Where they talking about you should be uh, uh having having no no sleep at night. I done mess around and gave you peace. <laughs> yeah. I'm stepping into your circumstance. <laughs> Because in a minute, I'm going to need somebody that I can trust that pours out. I'm going to need somebody who can cry out with my name. And that the things that I give you won't mess you up when this is over. Can we talk? God is blessing some folk in the middle of COVID. And when this is over, we're going to give glory to an almighty God. We're going to give glory to his name. We're going to bless him in the field. We're going to bless him everywhere. And so I, I said, I, I, I said, all right, 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 right. He said, Jesus did. The reason why Joel is necessary uh -huh. because he needs to use all of these factors from Joel uh -huh. to create the point that he's using in the book of Acts. He needed the locust uh -huh. yeah. to make the people cry. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. He needed to take away what you got comfortable with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Remove that from us. Make the preacher cry between the altar and the pool. Make the saints get up and pray in the morning. Yeah. Not that little two second prayer. I'm talking about we praying now. We seek the Lord at all times. He said all these things had to happen before there was a point. Come on here. So he said, I'm going to restore the order. And then I'm going to pour it. Pour y'all in. Y'all think y'all got it. 
What am I saying? What am I saying? Stop looking in your house, looking at the ceiling, talking about you're going to die. If you're a saint of God, you better be looking for the miracle. Look for the blessing. Because I'm going to tell you this, God got to have somebody left to give his name the glory. And that would be the God. My, I ain't let nobody mess me up in this season. I ain't let nobody mess it up my hallelujah. Because I done figured out, I ain't even got to talk to you to get glory. Amen. Amen. I only have to dance with you to get glory. Me and Gibson was sitting outside. He said something profound that I'm going to preach later on. I'm going to have to preach it before he preaches. And, and he said something. And both of us was out there in the rest of you getting down with some good old sanctified crisscross dancing. Wasn't no music. But what he said resonated with my organ on the inside. And my hammer just riled up and gave me my drum and my beat. And I got on the thing. And when I stopped dancing, I danced some more over what he said. God Almighty. Because that's what's happening. I don't need nobody to help me praise him now. Baby, in my car, I give him glory. Man, hit that organ. We got to go. I don't care wherever I am. I will bless the Lord. At all times. <laughs> so he has to use Joanne. Oh, my time is up. So he has to use Joanne. Because all of the factors in Joanne are the same factors in the book of Acts. Yes, sir. It's the same fact. Yes, sir. He restored the people yes, sir. back to who they were before they knew they were restored. That's why Jesus had to come back and talk to them and send word, meet me in Galilee. Because yeah. I'm going to show you that what I told you I was, I am. He said, look at my hands. You see that right there? Yeah. That's a sure foundation. Yeah. That I was what I said I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but now that I'm back, God, I'm you already know by the nails in my hand, in my wrist, yes, that I was what I said I was. Yeah. And if I'm the redeemer, if I'm the resurrection yeah. and the life, yeah. God said he had already given them resurrection and life before he gave them power. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So God is saying, I'm going to give you resurrection before I bring you out of COVID. I'm going to go ahead and restore you back. In the middle of this mess, I know COVID, I know, I know, I'm crazy. In the middle of this mess, the, 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 that's why Joel, this is why some of the things that Joel is necessary because it fits the pattern yes, sir. of that time. Yes, sir. And Joel fits the pattern of our time. Please talk with Ken. Next week we're going to talk about why he said son Why didn't he just talk to the sexist me? No, sir. He didn't do it. He said, when I pour out of my spirit, it's going to be on all flesh. And your son and your daughter shall prophesy. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all ain't with me. Y'all gonna have to come next week and find out what is a real daughter and son that prophesy. Uh, <laughs> is it the title of the prophet or are you prophesying with how you live? You gonna have to come back next week to find out why he's poor on his son. And his daughters.
Father, we thank you. We give you praise and honor for who you are. Lord, thank you for showing us in Joel. Lord, how the locusts took it away. But God, you're restoring it back. Because you're giving back, Lord. And then you're pouring out your spirit. And that was the same way, Lord, that happened with Jesus Christ. You took Jesus away. And then, Lord, you restored the people. And then you poured out your spirit. And, Lord, we thank you right now for clarity in the Bible. That, Lord, you've taken some things away from us. But, Lord, you're going to restore back to us. And then give us a new, fresh power. Not just the old, regular, old church power. When this thing is over with COVID, Lord, we're going to have some showing up power. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't no time to panic. This is the time to get your power back. Uh, in the name of Jesus, you're going to be better than you've ever been before. God's going to do some wonderful things. So, Lord, we appreciate you for your sons and your daughters. Give us clarity and all this speech as we move in you. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm finished. I'm finished today. I'm finished today. I'm finished today. You got to come back next week. Please come back. COVID team, y'all better come back. Amen. So we can find out about their sons and daughters and that they shall prophesy. Is it making sense to you now? Amen. So as it was in your end, it was in the book of Acts. It's happening right now. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. Listen, when this is over, y'all need to come and visit. Amen. If we can have this much church with 10 people, imagine when you come in here and join forces. <laughs> it's going to be on and popping. If you're not saved today, please go to Romans 10 and 9. Don't just confess it with your mouth, but believe it in your heart. And watch God transform you so that you can become like we are. And that is sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. I love you. Thank you for your time with me. You got to come back next week and hear the final conclusion of this matter. Episode 3 of Sons and Daughters. They shall prophesy. What does it mean for you? I appreciate you. Amen. I thank God for you. And we're going to do some great things. Be a blessing, be a blessing, be a blessing to, to your ministry. Come on, don't, don't forget your ties in your office this week, amen, because we needed to get through this pandemic, amen. If you have any need, please here at GBC, you've got the message. Anywhere else, please, 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 don't, don't do this by yourself. You have a people and you have a God that God is doing some great things. I love you, I appreciate you, and I thank God for you. That's one of the reasons why he used Joel. Let's find out next week the conclusion of the matter. I appreciate you and love you. God bless. Blessings be on you. Everybody say with me, I'm anointed. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm increased. I'm empowered. I'm in the kingdom. And I'm in order. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.